You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. As a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, all of your gifts are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com. God bless you. Good afternoon and welcome to another hour of Declaring the Finished Work. And this is your host, Pat Randall, on this wonderful Thursday afternoon, amen, or whenever you tune in to listen, amen. If you were with me last week, I was still on the question, who deserves love? Now this is Who Deserves Love, part three. Let's pray before we get started. Father, I thank you for your presence, that you are always there supporting, encouraging, being gracious and kind. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that's always teaching and instructing and guiding and comforting. I thank you for my brother Jesus, who is that friend that sticks closer to than a brother, that he has given us through his life a return to the true relationship that we've always had, but we were deceived into thinking that we'd been separated. So I thank you. I thank you for this day. I thank you for the breath of life And that you are as close as my breath because you dwell on the inside of me. So guide me during this broadcast and guide my thoughts in that I'll only say what needs to be said today. I thank you for the work, Holy Spirit, that you will do in the hearts of the listeners to this message today. And I pray this in the name of my Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. So thanks for joining me again for another episode here. So I'm going to, I really want to start off here talking about salvation because salvation is a key part of understanding God's love for us because he so loved the world. When We come to the Lord because of shame, because we've been guilt-tripped to the altar, or because we're fearful, we've we've been terrorized by the thought of burning in hell for eternity. Can we really call that salvation? Is that really lifting up Jesus who will draw all men to him? Will this give us a true understanding of his love and his forgiveness for us? Because salvation is a very positive experience when you come to know the the love of the Lord and how much he loves you and, and that this love is unconditional and that that he's loving you right now in that very state that you're in. 
no matter where you are or what you're doing, that he's loving you. He is right there in that moment with you, loving you, loving you into wholeness. This is what is life-changing. This is what causes us to want to move from where we are to where we should be. So today I want to talk about how Jesus responded to the people that he encountered. And he, re- he, he encountered all kinds of folks, but he was always who he was. I believe that because people have not experienced real salvation, that it actually causes the leadership to feel that they need to control us by obedience and the fear of sin- sinning or the fear of not belonging or fitting in or or the fear of being criticized because when true salvation is experienced it is something that anchors us and it steadies us in our lives and it it doesn't mean that we're not going to go through stuff that we're not going to be challenged that the storms are not going to come and the winds may be strong but we have something that will keep us no matter what type of storm we may go through in life. Ephesians 3 is a chapter that talks about salvation. It says, for by grace that we've been saved and it's not by works. So no man can boast about it, right? It is something that God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has done for this world. Okay, let's talk about a couple of stories where Jesus encountered certain types of people. Let's talk about the tax collector. Okay, the tax collector, Zacchaeus. Jesus was coming into town, and this is a man of short stature. But he had a lot of money, and he had a lot of power, because... He was really an officiate for the Roman Empire. He was collecting taxes on their behalf and also making some money for himself by extorting even more money than the people were required to make. And he was ostracized by the Jewish community. He was considered a sinner. He was considered unclean. And they would not enter into his house. This is how they felt about him. And Jesus, the day that he came into town and he saw Zacchaeus up in the tree trying to get a a full view because he'd heard about Jesus coming. He looks up and he tells him, come down. I'm going to go have dinner at your house today. Now, You know what that would be like in present day? It's just like if Jesus encountered, let's say he encountered RuPaul, who is a transvestite. And he says to her, or he, whatever you, however you want to address it. uh, I want to come to your house and have a meal with you and your friends. What would our reaction be? Toward Jesus. What would it be? It would probably be just like the Jews in his time. Who not just the religious people. I mean the religious leaders. But those who followed the religious leaders. They all responded the same way. Like how could Jesus possibly go into the home of this person. And he knows who this person is and what he is and what he does. And yet he wants to spend time with him. But what was the result of this story? The result of this story is that Zacchaeus decided after his his experience 
that contact with Jesus, that contact with that perfect love, that perfect love that cast out all fear, that perfect love that does not condemn, that does not make you feel guilty, coming into contact with that kind of love and acceptance changed that man. He did a complete turnaround. And he said to Jesus today that he would return all of the money he had stolen. And some people he was going to pay back twice as much or whatever. You know, well, you know, read it in the Bible. All the little details are in the story in the, in the New Testament. And this is the change that happens in real salvation. That's what it does. When salvation comes to your home, this is what happens. Another story, the Samaritan woman at the well. Well, first of all, Jews are known not to even travel through Samaria because they considered all Samaritans beneath them and also an unclean people because they felt that they didn't worship and believe the way they did. So they, they were an ostracized community. They ostracized the whole community of Samaritans and decided that they were not fit for them to even walk in the same on the same piece of land with them. And Jesus decides with his disciple in his travelings to go through Samaria. And as he sends his disciples off to get food, he sits down by the well, knowing that this Samaritan woman was going to come up to get water. Because of that particular time of the day is when she came, when there were no other women around. Because she wasn't accepted. She had been ostracized as well. She was on the fringe of society. Her behavior was unacceptable. Her morals were unacceptable. Even the, the race that she, be, she belonged to, the Samaritans, that group of people, they were not acceptable. So she had a whole bunch of things that was going on that was unacceptable in the sight of man. And Jesus took the time to have this conversation with this woman, letting her know that he knew who she was. He knew her life, and yet he sat there with her alone, mind you. It was just him and this woman, this unacceptable woman, and he sat there and he gave her truth, the truth that led to her salvation. And she went back into her community now bold, proclaiming that she had met this man. He, and he had to have been the Messiah because he knew everything about her and he had never met her before. And Jesus stayed in Samaria several days and he he preached. He allowed that community to experience his acceptance and his love. This is, is the type of life that has been set before us. Not just set before us, but this is the kind of life that has been placed on the inside of us. That gives us the capability to receive love and to give love. This is the last story that I'm going to do in this episode. And it's going to be about that prostitute who was caught in adultery. And they were about to stone this woman to death because that was their law. That she deserved to be stoned to death. And what did Jesus do in that moment? He looked at all of them and he said, You who are without sin, like... You who have never done anything wrong, that you are so good and you're so righteous, why don't you throw the first, of course I'm paraphrasing, you throw the first stone. Was there anyone present there other than Jesus 
that was qualified to throw a stone. Not one. Not one. Do you hear me? Not one. And we throw stones all the time. So who deserves to be loved? We all deserve to be loved. And it's because our Father created us to be loved. He didn't create create us to judge us and criticize us and to ostracize us. That's not his doing. The separation that man has experienced is at his own hands. It is of his own doing because he allowed himself to be deceived. But think about it. It was his first deception. He probably hadn't even heard what it didn't even know what deception was until he came into contact with the first deception and the first lie because he was just fellowshipping with with God. And here comes that spirit of deception, that spirit of lying, and we know where that comes from. It comes from the evil one. Or as some call him, the devil. And that was the beginning of what we believed was separation from God. Because even at the point that it happened, God still called out to Adam and Eve, searching for them in the garden. But he knew that they were hiding because now they were feeling shame, something they'd never felt before. They were feeling guilty, and they were feeling afraid. And these are the things that separate us from God, not draw us to him. So when I see those types of tactics being used to bring people to Christ, I know without a doubt that that is not of God. So anyway, I'm going to stop right here in the broadcast. Amen. And uh, don't forget tomorrow is, uh, let's see, what what Friday is this? Is this the first Friday? Yeah, this is the first Friday. So let's see who is on the schedule for the first Friday. Okay, that'll be Friday Night Joy with Pastor Ray Rose at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So remember... Put it on your calendar if you need to or on your alarm to uh, join Pastor Ray Rose, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks again for joining me for this time. And I hope you heard something that would strengthen and encourage you. That it will draw you deeper into the love relationship that you have. With the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's unconditional, this love. And it's perfect. And because it is perfect, it will drive out that spirit of fear. Well, God bless you. And God willing, I will be here next week. Amen. And seeing where the Spirit of the Lord takes me. God bless. Bye. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. 
when Christians speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news.